Hey, Tested. Today's one day build challenge involves this, my brand new car. My wife and I have just purchased this beautiful new Toyota and uh, we've had a problem with our cars in the past. We've gotten this one the way we like it with a leather interior. Look at the back. Yeah. And we like this kind of interior, but our dogs freaking hate it. Uh, they hate sitting on the leather and they tear it to shreds. And so for today's one day build, I want to remedy that problem. Adam, how are you gonna remedy this situation? I'm gonna remedy it with the dog bed, but specifically something I haven't seen. We have a dozen dog beds in our house, but what I'm gonna make is a dog bed that fits the back of the Prius and can't be shoved aside by the dogs. So I'm actually gonna make uh, some, I think, some dowel-based little pressure plates that stick in the seat so that we can put the dog bed in the back seat, the dogs can hang out there, they won't trash the car, and they'll enjoy sitting down. Let's talk through the process of okay. this, because you need to measure the back seat. Yep. It needs to perfectly fit that back seat of mm -hmm. your Prius. Um, and it needs to be something that's removable. Yes, I want it to be removable. More than that, I actually want it to fold in the middle so it can go into the trunk. So I'm not gonna make it a single expanse dog bed. I'm actually probably gonna put a seam in the middle so that We'll see, but so that it can actually efficiently fit in our trunk and not take up too much room. Sounds like you thought about this a lot. You think you can build it in one day? I think I can build it in one day. I've picked up some beautiful corduroy of many colors uh, at the fabric store, and you got me some stuffing this morning. Uh, I got some zippers, so uh, we're gonna, it's a sewing one day build. All right, let's get started. Okay. <clears throat> I've got to go out to the Prius and make a few measurements. All right, Adam, let's start off with your drawing. Not to scale. Not to scale at all. I've just measured the back seat and um, it looks like this is a pretty straightforward build. Uh, I'm basically building boxes. Two boxes. Two boxes out of fabric, which are gonna be hinged in the middle so they can fold on top of each other. So the whole thing is fabric. You don't, there's no wood frame or anything. There's no wood frame. Uh, and there is gonna be wooden dowels in these little lips here, and those will shove into the seat mm. as a way of holding the dog bed in registration to the seat so the dogs can't peel it up. Yeah. Um, I have it drawn on the bottom here, and the actual Prius, um, there's about a four inch lip so those will go on top but i have all my measurements and the next thing i'm going to do is start drawing this pattern in full scale on craft paper and then start cutting out my fabric pieces again these are basically boxes with tops sides bottoms the zipper is just a bit of manufacturing but the revelation i had about sewing when i was first doing it is that sewing carpentry welding are all the same thing you're effectively joining planes together under certain rules. And sewing, the planes happen to be soft material, but they are also flat, just like plywood, just like steel plate. And then you're filling it, uh, there's corduroy on the outside, you're gonna have muslin as a liner, and on the inside, just pillow uh, stuffing? Well, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, this is a standard dog bed construction in that the corduroy will be a shell, effectively, with a zipper in the back. Mm. Um, that shell will be filled with two muslin pillows that I stuff inside there. And this allows me to uh, take the muslin pillows out for washing 
-hmm. the dog bed. Uh, it's a critical thing you need to do because they get pretty filthy. Uh, it also allows me to repair it if I need to. Uh, and now with the stuffing, any reason you're using pillow stuffing instead of foam, like a memory foam? Um, I, I'm using pillow stuffing simply because that's what all my dog beds are stuffed with. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the dogs really like, they're used to it, they like it. That's what I'm gonna give them. I thought about using foam and batting and cardboard and stuff like that inside to give this stuff structure, but I've been watching my dogs over the past few weeks and I've been thinking, eh, they just want a straight cushion. Awesome. Okay, well, let's get patterning. Okay. All right, Adam, uh, so this is the pattern. This is the pattern. This is the most important part of the pattern because it is the, the shape of the car seat in the back of the Prius. I've accommodated uh, the, the, the width so that the dog's dirty paws can't get to the seat. Um, these extra flaps are strips of corduroy that will have a dowel sewn into the end so you can shove those into the seat and it will hold this thing in registration. Um, but the reason there's only one pattern when there's many more pieces of mm -hmm. fabric is because the top and the bottom are effectively identical. And uh, the walls. And the walls are just four inches of fabric. So I'm basically gonna cut out one, two, three, four pieces of this fabric, cut out these three things, cut out a bunch of four inch border, uh, uh, and then I'm gonna sew it all together. Uh, and you want that seam, as that's why you're not tying the border in to the edge, or the wall into the edge. Yeah, I want the seam, especially, I'm actually gonna do two colors. I'm going to do, I think, a, uh, I'm gonna do one color for the bottom and the sides and a separate color for the top, just to make it look kinda nice. Because the, the seat isn't a rigid form. Right. Do you have to give any extra material to, for where it's I, gonna dip? In fact, I did. I gave it uh, an extra inch on the side so it'll shove up against the doors a little bit. Um, I didn't give it extra in the, f I'm, it goes right up to the edge in the front, which I think is totally sufficient because the, the way I watch the dogs sit, they don't, mm -hmm, I don't no. need any extra there, but over here I think I do. I'm actually kind of excited about this. I've never made a cushion before. Um, I've sewn many, many things and many costume parts, but never a cushion, so. So the corduroy. Yeah, here we go. I was a little worried that the green and red would look a little over Christmassy, but I love this red and I love this green and I don't think it looks Christmassy. I think it looks classy. The marker I'm using here is a fabric marker. It's actually a little toothed wheel with a bunch of chalk inside of it. Um, and you can get right up to a ruler with this. This is my favorite cloth marking tool for patterning. Um, I say favorite as if I'm experienced at this, and I'm not incredibly, but I do have like every kind of fabric marker there is, and I like this one the best.
All right, so I have all of my cloth cut. I've got my tabs, I've got my walls, I've got my zipper walls, um, I've got the muslin inner pillows uh, that will go inside the outer uh, cover so it can be washed. And that's what I'm gonna sew up first, the muslin inner pillows, and that will give me uh, some practice for this shape on my sewing machine. Let's get started. One of the great parts about sewing the muslin first is that I get to practice on this weird irregular shape before I go to my hero corduroy. Um, I get to figure out how the corners work and how to lay out my fabric. I know that there are probably standard ways to do these things, but trying it is the only way I know how. So the muslin allows me to make all my mistakes because the, oh, right, I should just say this. The muslin, inner pillows are the exact same shape as the corduroy outer pillows. So the practice is one-to-one -one for all the angles and lines and stuff. Here we go. All right, time to stop. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I almost screwed up there. Um, before I stuff, the muslin pillows have been sewed inside out. <laughs> I've got to turn them right side out. Good, now we stuff. These, uh, these little clips I'm using are, at least to me, they're a new thing. Um, using them in place of pins, uh, and I'm really digging them. They are uh, versatile, they're fast, there's no, you don't get stuck by them, um, and they're cheap, like five or six bucks for like 60 of them. Um, they may be my new favorite sewing thing. Okay. All right. Very excited about that, that looks great. So one of the key things about the dog bed for the car is that uh, it doesn't just sit on top, it's engineered to stay there. And I'm doing that by putting dowels inside of cloth flaps that you can stuff in the seats and it will hopefully hold the bed in situ. So I've cut all the dowels, I've made all the flaps, I'm now about to turn them inside out and sew the dowels inside. Right, zippers. Zippers are the next thing. Well, in sewing the zipper, I have made a mistake. Ha! Huh. Wrong side of the corduroy. No one's gonna see this, but I will know. So I'm gonna redo it. Now I'm going to enlist the help of a seam ripper. If you are prone to accidents like me, the seam ripper is an absolutely critical tool. So I've got to undo all the sewing that I just did and redo it from the other direction. It's fine. These mistakes happen, especially in uh, when you're doing repetitive operations with this kind of thing. You've really got to just like, every time you're about to take a step, ask yourself, how am I going to screw this up? And I didn't do that on this. I didn't ask that question. And lo, it happened almost instantly. That, right, that, right, 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 that, so then it folds. Yes! What a dope, what a moment. What a min cow poo. Uh, I have just learned something new about sewing with corduroy that I didn't know before I started this project, and that is uh, that corduroy uh, in addition to having a direction like that, also has a direction, it looks different depending on which angle you're looking at the lines at. Um, and this is most notable when you look at my side panels on this zipper panel here, they look different than the cross panels and it's because I got the, um, is bias the word I'm looking for? I got it wrong. 
Now this is a zipper panel, it's on the inside of the cushions, no one's ever gonna see it, so that's fine, but notable that for the second zipper panel, I plan to get this right. There we go, yeah. All right, Adam, you've been sewing for quite a bit and it looks like you have most of your pieces together. What's missing and what do you have so far? Well, what I'm doing, I'm actually putting together the last of the pieces, which is the hinge between the two cushions. I've got the stays, which are the dowel filled pockets. Mm -hmm. I've got the zipper panels. I've got the top and bottom panels. The tops are red, the bottoms are green. Wow. Um, and. I'm also right now working through the whole order of operations. Um, the cushions that I sewed out of muslin uh, were very easy because I could just <laughs> but all around. But when I do the real ones, there'll be a hinge along this seam, a zipper underneath, a stay here and one here on one half and another stay on the bottom here. So all of this needs to be illustrated on these panels so that I don't forget. And then there is an, a definitive order so, that, so you can build out the walls first and then get the last zipper parts mm -hmm. and the connecting parts in. Exactly. I'm going to, I'm more inclined to do the more difficult one first, which is the top layer. Mm -hmm. That's the tough one um, because it's got a hinge, zipper panel, and two stays. When you're visualizing this in your head, yeah. is it almost like a puzzle that you are like making, you're both making the pieces of and then also putting together? It is, um, and especially because these two halves are bilaterally symmetrical, they're opposite each other, mm -hmm. so any mistake you make can compound and require you to rebuild this whole thing from scratch. So yeah, I have in my head the cloth halves, top and bottom, the wall around, the stays sitting there, and I'm holding these things in orientation so that as I lay it out, I can label them and get going. You also say you're gonna do the toughest part first. Is that because you have the most energy and mental energy now? Or? That's, a, that's simply a philosophy. That's yeah. simply a philosophy of mine. I always tackle the tough problem first and then I finish on the easy problem. There's nothing worse than grinding it out on the hard problem to solve at the end of a project. Yeah. I like to give myself a little reward. All right, the hinge is the final kind of physical piece. Yeah. So let's let you get to that. I'm excited, we're close. Well, I was barreling down on finishing the first half of this cushion and I started rounding the last corner and I noticed that uh, my corners weren't matching up, my lines weren't matching up. I hadn't pinned this and I guess the fabric had stretched or I screwed up. I have to remove this whole top panel now. Arr! It's all right. You know what I'll bet? I'll bet some of you were watching that going, oh, you're about to make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sure those of you who are more adept at sewing are laughing. I mean, along with me, because we all make the same mistakes when we're figuring stuff out. Mm -hmm. I hope we do. Almost and ah! Oh. There we go. The first pillow. That's one cushion. That's one Who's cushion. This? Is this Maggie's or Huxley's? <laughs> I don't Have know that either of it? them takes. Uh, I don't know that either of them takes precedence to one side of the car or the other. But they don't. They don't choose. They no. just. They just like standing there. Want to see something cool though? Yeah. So clearly, this is inside out. We turn yes. it right yep. side out by undoing the zipper. It's always a little bit tricky. Because the zipper is also inside out. You don't the have the also, tab. Yeah, so I don't have the tab, but I undo the zipper. <sighs> you gotta. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. That's it. Okay, so then I gather the parts of this. Invert 
it. All right. There's my hinge. There's my bottom stay. There's my top stays. Okay, so let's put in a cushion. Yep. Let's do it. Okay. Now, which is the way? It goes that way, right? Hold on, let me just double check. Okay, those are just little thready threads from the screw up before, right? Yeah. Okay. So long sides of the cushion that's here, that goes there. Right. That's the short side. Yeah, so, so it goes, goes right in. in like this. It's never easy to do this. Put a cushion <laughs> inside a pillow. Shame. Okay. Begins. Well, I'm really glad I decided not to do piping. Oh, you were thinking about piping around the seams? I briefly <laughs> thought about piping around the seams. Okay, so. Ladies and germs. Bam, that's like a magic trick. Look at that. That's pretty. Woo! I'm very excited about that. that one is, out of two. Complete. That is one out of two. And actually, the second one will get sewn to this one. Woo! That's and were you final. thinking about the orientation of the corduroy and how it would uh, be perpendicular? No. It looks good. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm pleased with that. Um, I am very pleased with that. I hope that, you know, I've got all these little threads from my previous messed up seam. Because um, it's consistent on the, on the top and bottom. It is. It is. That I knew I was doing. Okay, so that was on purpose. Um, but I think that looks comfy for a doggy. All right. I'm going to get going on the second one. All right. Wish me luck. Good luck. <laughs> And there is the final clip. It's time to sew the last seam. Here we go. <sighs> this is the part where mistakes get costlier. I really hope I didn't screw this up in some fundamental way. I gotta tell you, I conceived of this as being simpler than it ended up being. Complexity. Creeps up on you. Okay. There she is. That's it. Well, a little bit of stuffing to do. Here we go. I really hope I don't open this up and find that I've accidentally sewn a whole portion of this to itself. I have done that before. There we go. There we go. Come on. Come on out into the light. Let's see what we got. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, please. That looks like what I intended it to look like. So let's see. It's funny colors. All right, now. That, like that, yep.
that side. Adam, those look like thrones fit for your pups. <laughs> Dude, also, so everything's in the right place. These are the stays that mm -hmm. shove into the seats. These are the ones that drape down over the front. Um, here's my favorite part. Boink. Folds over and that makes it easy and to take to the pillows out. To pop out the cushions. Yep. My corners are sealed. They're not gorgeous, but you know, there's two things left to do. One is fit this in my car. Second, Go pick up the dogs. Oh, it's the maiden voyage. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Ooh, hold on. Okay, in the back, in the back, in the back. There you go. There you go. Oh, how do you like it? How do you like it? How do you like it? Do you like it? Oh, have a seat. We're gonna go for a little test drive to see how they do in that back seat. Look at the dogs, they're very happily sitting on a cushion. Yes. Oh. Hey Mikey, I think he likes it. Good boy. Very good boy. I think. That's total success. It's very, very exciting. They are not tearing up the back seats. 